Sleep peacefully, Arthur Grimble. For today, much will be asked of you. More than you could ever dream of. Arthur Stanley Grimble woke at his customary speed. No moans, no groans, no hesitant tones. In fact, he felt rather bright. The day was quite sunny, the air nice and fresh, a sharp, crisp, dry Monday at 7 a.m. Open the window, knees bend, breathe in deep. Then into the kitchen, a bowl of brown Wheaties, some tea and some toast. A wash and a shave and rub on the cream. Oh, that plastic gets itchy, unpleasant and rough. And then to the cupboard, the moment of choice. Which face for today? Which mood to portray? Take me, snarled the grim face. Be normal, be sad, it's Monday. You're human, there's no cure for that. No, oh, me, laughed the smile. Take me and be glad. Just show them you're happy with me on life's fine. He reached out and took it. <laughs> That's me to a T. I'm happy and carefree. That smile's made for me. But he picked up the snarl. It went in his bag. In case of misfortune, you never can tell. Arthur Stanley Grimble set out for the office, a smile on his face, the spare in his bag. Oh, that's funny, he thought, a dustman on Monday. They come at the end of the week. But he gave him a nod as he passed, and a smile. Well, what else could he do with that face on, you see? The dustman just stood on the corner and watched as Arthur walked by. <laughs> Strange dustman, thought Arthur, to come on a Monday to stand on the corner and bring his own bin. The train was on time, the 8.17. The sky grew much greyer, the sun faded in. There were five in his section, all kept to themselves. Four snarls for a Monday, and one fast asleep. The office looked gloomy. The clouds turned to rain. Oh, this smile's not so suited. A snarl's what I need. He walked in the door. Mrs. Graythorpe was there, the cleaner, who had just done the floor. He smiled as he passed her. She glared back at him with a face that read like a book. Two hours I've been scrubbing the floors like a mirror, and in comes his highness with mud on his shoes. A nod of young David, still learning the trade, but he's eager and keen, could do well given time. A glance at Miss Padgett. She, a reply, warning Mr. Grimble. Oh, cold yet again. For Delia, he smiled. Beneath his smile, his heart went flip. Oh, Delia, dear Delia. Then into his room, the door shut behind him, the keys safely turned, and off with his smile, a wipe of the brow. Oh, this plastic's much cheaper, I know, but so hot. In here, on his own, a chance to breathe deep, in safety, unseen by the others and free of their stares. A rattle of bins on Monday? No, they come on a Tuesday, each week and much later. He grabbed at his snarl face and went to the window. <laughs> it's them right enough, or rather, just one, it looks like the same man, the one from this morning, still smiling, still staring, and still with his bin. Arthur Stanley Grimble had more important things to do than spend the rest of his day looking out of his third floor window at a dustman. So he went back to his desk. Now, let me see, the plan for the day must first see the staff, give them orders, give them work. He opened his cupboard and took out the list. Now, first for young David, I'll need to be firm. 
then take me, said the firm face. And then for Miss Paget, still sniffling with cold, a face of compassion, of sorrow. That's me. For Delia, the best, the one with a smile and no wrinkles, the sleek and the smooth. These three he took out, plus one more for the boss for their regular chat to check their accounts, the face of a humble man. The morning passed well, the faces all fitted, young David intent and alert, impressed by the style, and Miss Paget needs comfort, compassion, I hope you'll be well, I do understand. And third there, dear Delia, his charm overflowed such grooming distinction, so handsome, so smart, and even the boss was impressed, said the figures were good, keep it up, do your best, but Arthur just knew it's appearance that counts. Arthur Stanley Grimble sat drinking his tea, the door safely locked, the faces put back, except for the two sat beside him. The smile and the snarl. Miss Paget rang through. I'm sorry to buzz you, it's tea break, I know, but a, a man's come to see you, a man with no mask. I think he's a dustman, he's, he's smiling, no crying, no, no laughing, I'm scared. Get him out, throw him out, call the police, take him out, that man in his bin. I'll not let him in. Arthur Stanley Grimble sat eating his lunch, the door safely locked, the phone off the hook, and quietly groaned deep inside where it hurt. All of a sudden, the window crashed open, a clatter and a bang as the man struggled in. Get out, what do you want? Go away! shouted Arthur as he grabbed the snarl from the desk by his side. But the dustman climbed in, looked him straight in the eyes, and went up to the cupboard. The key was still there. He opened it wide, and then, with a sweep, he took out the lot, all the faces of Arthur, the ones for the day, those for the staff, for the boss and the clients. The dustman just put them all in his bin, every last one just disappeared in. Get out! Go away! cried Arthur in fear. He stamped and he shouted, he rented and roared. The dustman came closer and smiled at poor Arthur and reached out his hand. He took off the snarl Arthur wore on his face. That, too, went straight in the bin. Then back to the window, one foot through the gap. When Arthur awoke into action and leapt, he charged at the dustman to get back his faces. A man with no mask on, how dare he come here? But the man lost his balance, just fell through the air and crashed down below. The dustman lay still now, all crumpled and bent. His dustbin was broken, the face was thrown out. God, did I push him or not? Did he fall or just jump? Arthur panicked and screamed at the sight that he saw. He grabbed up his smile, rushed out down the stairs, called the others to follow and ran to the yard. He came to the spot and stood there in shock. The dustman was gone. Not a sign of his bin, just a mark on the ground. Two lines crossed in blood. Arthur Stanley Grimble spent all afternoon locked up in his room, alone, in despair. He still had one face left, the smile that he'd saved. The clouds were still heavy, the air was still grey. He thought of the man, the dustman who'd come. He went to the window, the smile in his hand, and looked down below. He stared at the marks in the yard, the thin stains of red left there by the dustman. He thought of that face, the one with no mask. And what he had done, and why had he come? 
and reached for the phone, sighed deeply and groaned. An order, Miss Padgett. New stock, right away. Get me some faces. Some new ones I need. A snarl and a sad face and one for the rain. The one for the bank, for successes and for loans. He looked at the window, the cupboard, the desk. Oh, and for depression, for pity, for death, and also for loving, for smartness, for best, for firmness and sharpness, for kindness and hate. Humility, envy, for jealousy, lust, for pride, and for avarice. 